cast them off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Tim. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. I'm Reverend Michael, and we are delighted for you to join us this morning. Please repeat after me. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and healing. The universe accepting love and healing. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and joy. And I open my heart to the universe accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe accepting love and peace. And just take that in. And that's a wonderful way to start our service. So here at the Center for Conscious Living, we are so delighted for you to join us. We do our services here on Zoom for now, and we will be returning. Um, plans are in September to do in person, but what a gift to be able to have this medium for doing our services. We have practitioners all around the room holding the high watch. It means holding the consciousness for all of us and knowing the principles and knowing the truths. So if anything you'd like to release into to them, you can let it go. <laughs> and just let the divine be. So our support for today's service is we have Reverend Paul Hoyt, and he's the pastoral support. He'll be responsible to put stuff into the chat room. Um, and we do put a lot into that chat. So is, open your chat <laughs> and take a look. Um, we have Lynn Slater, who is our third practitioner, and she will be holding consciousness for this meeting, meaning she knows the truth and this beautiful cathedral of light that surrounds all of this beautiful spiritual community knows the presence, the essence of the divine is here. We have Lisa Minert is our second and should be responsible to do our um, prayer requests that come in for today and also for the week. So we thank her for that ahead of time. And it is truly my pleasure to introduce our first practitioner, it's Reverend Sula. And um, she has been a mentor of mine and I am just so delighted that she stepped up to be our first practitioner today and she'll be starting this service with an invocation. Mm. Thank you, thank you. It is my honor and my joy. Mm -hmm. So take this in. When I set a glass prism on a windowsill and allow the sun to flood through it, a spectrum of colors dances on the floor. What we call white is a rainbow of colored rays packed into a small space. The prism sets them free. Love is the white light of emotion. So let's just, let's just take that in for a moment as we go into prayer, as we come together, acknowledging that each of us is that prism through which spirit expresses. That the love that is bathing each of us right now in this moment is shining through each one of us in miraculous and extraordinary ways. For I know that each one of us is showing up as a spiritual expression of the divine. We are each here, not only as a divine creation, but by divine invitation. So bringing that beautiful array of all that we are into this place, I know that there is truly blessings unfolding, not only for each of us, but that we send out these prisms of light and love to all that we love all that we know, sending love and light to those who are looking for healing and a revealing of the truth. Sending out enormous, 
beautiful rays of peace, of joy. As we come into this place we know as the Center for Conscious Living, I know this entity is completely blessed and is unfolding in this moment as a blessing and as a creation of the divine also that the Center for Conscious Living is a prism through which these energies, these emotions, this love, this peace, this wisdom, divine intelligence flows. Each of us is a prism for the center. And so I know that there are untold people that are being blessed in this moment by who we each are and what we do. So I bless each one today and I receive blessings in return. Forgiving and receiving are the same thing. And I know that as we are led this morning by Reverend Michael and Norman's music and all those who are present and helping and have come together to create this beautiful divine energy. I know it's already blessed. I know it's already perfect. And I just give profound thanks and say, thank you, spirit. And so it is. So it is. <sighs> I'm going to take that anger and write it down. Write it in the town and hear that sound. I'm going to take that anger and write it down. And I'm going to turn it all into love. I'm going to take that doubt and write it down. March right into town. Can you hear the sound? I'm going to take that doubt and write it down and turn it all into love. Norman, thank you. And I'd like to invite Reverend Sue once again for our inspirational reading, followed by our affirmation, which will be in the chat box, which actually is in the chat box. <laughs> thank you. That was fabulous, Norman. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm reading from one of my very favorite little books. It's called 40 Day Mind Fast Soul Feast by Dr. Michael Beckwith. And the title of the talk is called Up Level Your Vibratory Contribution. Some people mentally try to pick up vibrations from things, crystals, good luck charms, candles, pictures, statues, and so on. You are not here to merely catch vibrations from things. You are here to imbue things with your vibration. Everything in the three-dimensional world is made of spirits, thought vibrations, condensed into the appearance of form. 
its vibration of truth reverberates through you. It radiates outwards from you into the world. You are here to anchor the vibration of the divine and human dimension. Wait no longer, submissively hoping and attempting to pick up vibrations from without. Step out boldly and take possession of your dominion. You will then come into an inner poise, a state of sacred fitness. And this will instantaneously become a component of your vibrational field, of your aura. Then you will overflow with the love energy of God, which will radiate from you as a dynamic force. You will quicken the vibration of God everywhere you go and within everyone you meet. Today, refuse to see yourself as a recipient of negative vibrations or as a victim of subtle or gross influences around you. Practice broadcasting the high vibrations of the infinite, remembering that the place upon which you stand is holy simply because you, because you are standing there. Mm. Holy because you are standing there. Yes. And now if you'll read with me the affirmation. In full, full cooperation. cooperation. Is it up yet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. In full cooperation, I claim my presence. presence and emanate my truth. my truth. I am here to love and be loved. I am outrageously blessed. <laughs> and so it is. So it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Sue. <laughs> Had to do that outrageously blessed just for you and oh, for everyone here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So the talk for today so talk for today is something that kept on coming into my consciousness and I decided I'm going to work with this because as a um, religious science minister, also interfaith minister, um, and the practice of being open at the top, uh, I'm just not going to read to you. I want something that I'm going to have to work and research and study and see what I feel and put out some um, points of view. So it's titled Cooperation. And in cooperation, we look, follows, our first law is order. The universe and everything is in divine right order. And what follows that is our cooperation. As creations of the divine, it is our ability to keep ourself elevated, that our consciousness is aligned with the divine and the masterful plan of the divine. So I ask my, is that my responsibility? I guess if I accept that everything is done in divine right order, Buddha says, when you realize how perfect everything is, you will tilt your head back and laugh at the sky. <laughs> That's something to do daily. I know in myself, I look at what can I do to keep my being elevated, my consciousness elevated. And being here today is one of the things to rejoice with my spiritual community is certainly something that keeps my consciousness elevated. I work on meditations, affirmation, prayer, spiritual mind treatments, walks in nature, people that I love, things that make me feel good keep my consciousness elevated. I align myself with the highest and best and I cooperate with the divine and move in the direction of my heart move in the direction of divine within my heart. So Ernest Holmes, who is teaching is law, love and law, which is principle and presence as the two uh, twin pillars of science of mind, which he writes, that we tend to spend a lot of time on the universal principle of law of cause and effect. They teach us this, that we co-create our lives through our intention and beliefs, that we are both responsible for this and free to choose to create the life we desire, which is a blessing. Yet we long to feel the impress of life, the belonging to love and a sense of the larger reality. We begin to enter the notion that 
there is a God within and that somehow we are connected and part of the whole spiritual reality. Yet we work to recognize that the God present as the I that I am, we sometimes call it our higher self or our inner sense, knowing ourself both as co-creator and presence of love. Knowing this, I know that we are either moving in the direction of our good or we're not moving in the direction of our good. So I think that's the gift of our own consciousness, that what am I do what I am doing at this time or any time, am I moving in the direction of my conscious good? Am I co-creating with the divine intention of my life? So Thich Nhat Hung writes, love is the capacity to take care, to protect, to nourish. If you are not capable of generating that kind of energy towards yourself, if you're not capable of taking care of yourself or nourishing yourself or protecting yourself, it is very difficult to take care of another person. So it's an interesting point that it all always begins within ourself. So I looked in the self and, I, and when I think of the self, I think of our soul and my soul and my connectedness with my soul. So I returned to Erner's homes and he writes, the soul is creative medium of spirit, the thought which are given it. Men and women's soul life, life reenacts the soul life of the universe. Soul is subjected because it takes the thoughts of the conscious mind and acts upon it. So it's the creative medium, our soul, according to Ernest Holmes, is like the soil, what we put into it grows. So what is our relationship to our soul? And that's a question for each person here to ponder because I, I'm telling you when I thought about this, I had to really think, what is my relationship to my soul? Do I engage with my soul? Do I communicate with my soul? Do I acknowledge my own soul? Do I take a moment and welcome my soul to be present? Be present right here. Can everybody just take a moment, welcome your soul to be present? Do we truly just let go of any kind of struggle in line with our soul? Do we speak those words of kindness to our soul, being that is a creative medium? Do we cooperate with our soul? Proverbs 16, 24 writes, gracious words are a honeycomb sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. It's so beautiful, those words to me. I know that it's important that when I'm in communication with my soul that I do keep my higher vibration. I know that my being is divine, eternal. I claim the good and I claim my own worthiness and my birthright to be present. It's the soul, it's the divine soul within me that emanates my body, that gives it the movement, that gives it the life. So I went, okay, so soul, soul's eternal, my being. So I refer once again to Ernest Holmes and I do enjoy his writings and they seem to just always just line up. Ernest Holmes writes, nature will not let us stay in any one place for too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experiences necessary to the unfoldment and advancement of the soul. This is a wise provision for should we stay here too long, we would become too set, too rigid, too inflexible. Nature demands change in order that we may advance. So any change that has taken place, it is for our own advancement. So it seems that we need to, I shall en engage my soul for my own divine comfort. What am I here to accomplish? I think allowing myself to love and be loved is a beautiful accomplishment. To love freely and unconditionally is something else that my soul can support me in doing. The intention of becoming love. So Ram, Rami writes, all doubt, despair, and fear becomes insignificant when the intention of life becomes love.
that's your mom. So I wanted to do some research on soul. And so I just quoted Rami and I'll quote him again. My soul is from elsewhere. I'm sure of that. And I intend to end up there. So <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a good plan for my soul or my union with my soul or how my soul may support my being. Ernest Holmes writes, the divine plan is one of freedom. The inherent nature of a man, woman is ever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom because freedom is the birthright of every living soul. The road to freedom lies not through mis mysteries or occult performances, but through the intelligent use of nature's force of law. The law of mind is a natural law in the spiritual world. So my job of cooperation is cooperating with my moral principles, cooperating with the highest and best for my own truth. So I thought, I still feel a little more that I want to know more about the soul. So I was doing further research and I just came upon something that was titled the 10 most influential spiritual leaders around the world. And that's now. And here's what they have to say. So Deepak Chokra, you must go beyond the constant clamor of ego, beyond the tools of logic and reason to the still calm place within us, the realm of the soul, what keeps life fascinating in the constant creativity of the soul. The soul knows everything. Be who you are and your life will transform forever. Pope Paul, grace is not part of the consciousness. It is the amount of light in our soul, not knowledge nor reason. It's the amount of light in our soul. So I continued. So of course, um, the Dalai Lama is on here and the Dalai Lama is Buddhist and the Buddhists pretty much believe that there is no permanent self or soul because there is no unchanging permanent essence of soul. Buddhists sometimes talk about energy being reborn rather than soul. But Dalai Lama did say, there is soul music, soul food, and soul love. I'll take it. <laughs> um, Pablo Cleo, the author of The Alchemist, wrote, don't fear the light within, make it ignite the sacred flame in your soul. And then Eckhart Tolle, the power of now, and I believe we all know Eckhart Tolle. The soul is your innermost being, the presence that you are beyond form, the consciousness that you are beyond form, and that is the soul. That is who you are in essence, is the soul. Thich Nhat Hanh, once again, who is Buddhist as well, wrote, and which I just love his words and his kindness, so I'm gonna quote him anyway, because I know he doesn't have one about the soul, but he wrote, at any moment you have a choice that either leads you closer to your spirit or further away from it. And that's such a beautiful blessing. Um, James Redfield, who wrote the Celestine Prophecy is in reality, there are no enemies. We're all souls in growth waking up. We can take that in. Um, Don Miguel Lu Ruiz wrote the four agreements. One of the most courageous decisions you will ever make in your life is displaying the authenticity of your soul. So all these magnificent people continue to talk of the soul. We have another, I have another one and it's Sir Sir Ravi Shankra. And who he is, he is the, the art of living foundation, the nonviolent movement. Um, who pledged nonviolence uh, non and he has like a million followers. And he writes, the enjoyment of the soul is when the senses turn inward. So I'm basically taking you on my own journey of what is the soul and sharing that. And then of course, the last person on that 10 most influential people were, was Rhonda Burns and she wrote The Secret. 
and I could not find one quote about the soul from her, so I guess it is a secret. So I went ahead and I said, what does Mother Teresa have to say? Reach high, for stars lie hidden in your soul. Dream deep, for every dream precedes the goal. And think, and since I wanted to also be fair, modern day person that I think is a spiritual teacher as well is Oprah. And she wrote, your soul tells you when it's time to move on. And I know I get those prompts from my soul. And since I'm a human rights activist as well, and the focus of this is cooperation, and I've always been fond of any human rights activists from Gandhi to Nelson Mandela, Harvey Milk, Mother Teresa, Malala, uh, Yurcifax. And so I wanna, my, one of my final quotes is Martin Luther King. There's something in the soul that cries out for freedom. Let that resonate. So in reaching in all these expressions of the soul, those freedoms of the soul, what would be the purpose of our soul? To love and be loved, to support us, to assist us in cooperating with the divine masterful plan, knowing that the soul knows the truth, your soul knows the truth of your existence knows the divine intention, knows your worth, knows your value. No, knows only support of you, love of you, the grace of you. Knows when it's time to let go of something and move on, to refocus with your purpose of why you're here for your own freedom to be, to love, to unconditionally embrace life and all its blessings, to feel good about the being that you are, the authentic divine creation. Here's some important, six important guidelines to follow in life. When you're alone, mind your thoughts. When you're with a friend, mind your tongue. When you are angry, mind your temper. When you are with a group, mind your behavior. When you're in trouble, mind your emotions. And when God starts blessing you, mind your ego. And I think our soul is the one that will guide us at each and every moment during this. This talk is of cooperation and it's exploring being with our soul, being with the grace, that, that divine essence within us and just allowing us to just be, to live in peace. We open up with that. I live in peace, in love, in the essence of the divine. So I want you just to breathe, invite your soul present, Know that the energy of the divine is present within you. That you're loved beyond measure. That you are divinely guided. You're sustained and maintained in the perfection of your being. That you're here to be free to live in the love, to live in the, the radiance, to live in the divinity of your own grace. And just breathe. Have you ever danced with your soul? Have you ever held the hands with your soul? Have you embraced your soul in a hug? You can do that right now. Do you ever let yourself know how much your soul loves and adores you and is blessed? 
for its own internal journey. I'd like you just to breathe your soul. If anything interferes with it, just let it go. Let the past die so that you can live. And be present right here and right now in your soul and allow that to fill you up, every cell of your being full and blessed. Today, I honor my soul. I honor the divine grace within, throughout, and about me, knowing that I live, breathe, move, and have my being in the magnificent grace of God, and I am in full cooperation with that divine plan. For I am here to love and be loved, and knowing that, and knowing I am embraced by my soul, I know that I am outrageously blessed. I'm just breathing to that. And I'd like to then, I'd like to do a treatment right here, but a specific request for a treatment was asked and I am agreed to do it. And I'd like this treatment that I'm doing to be for us as a beautiful community to bring forth our senior minister, our next senior minister. So I'm gonna do the recognition unification part of the prayer. And I'll let you know, there's the realization part where we speak the statements and our desired intention. And that part I'll let you know, and anybody and everybody can unmute and speak the words of the senior minister that you would like for the Center for Conscious Living. This is a community prayer that we put out that the perfect senior minister comes to us. And then I'll end the prayer with gratitude and intent and release. So just taking a breath into this present moment, knowing that all is done in divine great order, that we're whole, perfect and complete in the heart and mind of the creator for it. It is the divine, the multidimensional light, sound, color, vibration that sustains and maintains, celebrates and embraces all creation, holds all life in tender mercy and favor, knowing the truth of all existence. Mighty and infinite creator, mighty and infinite creation, the absolute demonstration, manifestation and celebration of good and more good. The alpha, the omega, the center and the circumference the grace, the glory, the magnificence, and the truth. For God is love. God is grace. God is the source, the substance, the sustainer, and the maintainer, the good, and the greater good. And I am one with God in this masterful divine plan, knowing I only exist in God as each person here only exists in God, whole, perfect, and complete in the heart and mind of the creator. I give thanks and praise to know that my life in God is one and that I am forever expanded, expressed, and celebrated all in the divine nature, the unification of the Almighty, knowing we are all unified in one with the divine. We come together to affirm the presence of our new senior minister for the Center for Conscious Living, and we now unmute and speak the words of our intention and our quality for our new spiritual senior minister. So speak the affirmations now, please. Knowing that this new senior minister is divinely guided to be here, to uplift, to be here in service. We can service all speak at the same joy. time. Our senior minister falls. I know that the universe is absolutely coming forward now with our perfect minister. I know the divine is already ordained. Perfect minister for us. And as we move into this glorious space that is the center, allowing egos out of the way and just calling forth that person who is already present in the mind of God and unfolds perfectly. And so it is. And speaking all of these words and more and whatever comes up for today and further on for the perfect senior minister for the Center for Conscious Living, we give thanks and praise. We give thanks and praise to come together to do this spiritual mind treatment together. This is a community, a spiritual community speaking in gratitude and grace, opening and welcoming 
the most perfect senior minister to come forth to lead this congregation that is inspiring. We are thankful for this opportunity. We are grateful for this senior minister. We are grateful that this goes out into the universe and creates the perfect outcome. We're grateful for each and every member of this beautiful spiritual community, past, present, and future. And we give thanks and praise to come together to know this truth, hold this consciousness, hold it in purity, unconditional love in the grace of God, knowing that this word is heard. And in this truth, I wholeheartedly, lovingly, freely, and completely release this word into the action of the law, the beginninglessness and endlessness of the creative medium where everything is demonstrated and manifested. Knowing that these words are created, I accept it as so, and together we affirm it by saying, and so it yes. is. is. Beautiful. Beautiful. God bless. <laughs> And you're up, Paul. <laughs> if you will join me in the chat, there is the blessing of our offering. If you'll join me in the reading of it. Thank you, God, for this abundance that is mine to share. I bless this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and in joy, knowing that as I give, I do receive. Wonderful. This is a time for us to just be part of this community, tied to this community so we can sustain and maintain and create the beautiful things that we have created and continue to plan to create. So thank you. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your contributions and thank you for your presence. Mr. Norman. It was beautiful, Norman. I don't think I could have picked a more perfect song and your lyrics continue to inspire me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, it's our time now where we usually do our, our uh, welcome our new visitors and we'll welcome our new visitors as well as everybody here as so we could just put our hands up and you can repeat after me. Welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community we open ourselves to you in love. We recognize the perfection of God within you. 
We celebrate the joyous being that you are. You are a radiant point of light. We are blessed by your presence. Welcome home. And put those hands right over your heart too, because <laughs> you're certainly part of that. Ah, and Virgie's beautiful heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's instructional <laughs> put your hand on your heart <laughs> that's beautiful thank you Percy. so we also have a mastermind um god covenant mastermind another word for god and then i will give you your responses so knowing there is a power intelligence and wisdom greater than my own and knowing it is responsive to my every thought word action and feeling say a lot Say aloud, I acknowledge. Surrendering to the power of the mastermind consciousness and knowing I am guided and assisted past any limited perception to God's truth within, now say, I surrender. Knowing forgiveness is the key to change, I now forgive myself and others for all mistaken judgments. And I open the door to unconditional love by saying, I forgive. Realizing my life is the creation of my own thought, I now choose to fill my mind with thoughts that are positive, loving, and beautiful. And I allow myself to reflect that choice by saying, I choose. Holding the consciousness for the Center for Conscious Living, we now thank God for the continual prosperity of the spiritual community and for everyone. For myself, I now go within to the silence of my own mind as I ask for my own specific requests, knowing the universe always says yes. Repeat after me, I accept. I accept. With a thankful heart and knowing that all I have asked in the name of the mastermind is now given to me, I say, thank you, God. And together, uh, I'll just read it. You can follow me. The love of God enfolds me. The mind of God inspires me. The spirit of God enlightens me. The power of God encircles me. I am in God and all is well. For I am enthusiastic, excited, expect it and at peace and you can all look into the camera and say i'm grateful god has heard you because you're talking to your community i'm grateful god has heard you <laughs> i'm so very grateful god has heard you because has heard this beautiful spiritual community so i have the announcements so I want to start next week. We have a guest speaker and that's Mary Reed. And she truly is a modern day mystic. And she's every time I've attended her, her talks, I've just been so inspired. And I also am so looking forward to it. And when I am communicating with her, she asked if I would share that she's also starting July 21st. She's on Wednesday evenings at uh, 7.30. She's going to do a limited series live stream and it's decisions about blessings and lessons learned, aiming uh, for a profound, free, honest and pure, loving, transcendent life. So um, you can go register for this if you want to further your work with Mary Reed, but I know I'm completely excited about her being one of our guest speakers. We also have Martha Michael, Creek. Michael, yes. could I just say that um, the Wednesday it. night thing with um, Mary Reed is also with um, Shalan Harkin. These, she is a mystical poet uh, channeling Hafiz, who is like Rumi, that you quoted, uh, it, just extraordinary, and that they're calling it, I don't know, mystics on the front porch or something. So they're yes. sitting and sharing this kind of intense mystical experiences that they have both had uh, in a, you know, it'll be, it'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. I was, <laughs> I needed that. So thank you contributing that. And um, 
Yes. So on August 8th, we'll also have Martha Creek as our guest speaker. On the 25th of this month, we'll have Reverend Ken Davies once again as our guest speaker. So there is a wonderful class coming up. And how do I know that? Because I am co-facilitating it with Keith Gunther. And I'm so excited about it. And it's from the Abundance book, this book, <laughs> yay. And so it is gonna be on Wednesday evenings, uh, seven to 9.30 from July 28th to the 18th of August. Um, the investment is $88. We're going to talk about, uh, there is a 40 day commitment. We're also gonna do radical forgiveness forms that are specific to money and our relationship to money a relationship to the divine as the supplier. Um, we're gonna do the emotion code with Keith, which is releasing all obstacles um, that interfere with us being totally receptive to the divine abundance out there. This is such a beautiful book. I'm actually, I, I today I just did a 107th day commitment <laughs> and the 40 day commitment, I'm at 107 days. Will be guided meditation. It'll be a fun, full summer loving class with an abundance of good things and meditations. So you're welcome to join us. Once again, it's on Wednesday evening. It starts at the 28th of this month. So, uh, so I have to say something about that too, because Keith with the emotion code, helping you let go of any blocks or unconscious beliefs that you have to really accepting abundance along with all of the thing that michael does with his dedication to abundance will be great i would not have made an announcement if i knew something um competed but the mary reed stuff uh is going to be recorded and online so you can do both one thank you thank you our <laughs> picnic okay we might have to wait for services into September, but in August 22nd, we're having a gathering, a picnic. And I'm so excited. It's going to be right at Laurel Acres Park, which is in Mount Laurel on Church Road. Uh, it's gonna be from one to five. Come as you are, bring a mask if you, if you feel you need to. We can also do bands read where you don't wanna interact physically, um, but it's just, we wanna see each other. It's a very, I want it to be nice and easy. I also sent a letter to Mike and Ellen Severis that doesn't interfere with the honor picnic if they're gonna have that in September, October, whenever. This is just, we get to see each other, bring something to eat and something to share. That's simple. Well, have water, I'll supply water. I already purchased three cases of water. I'm so excited about this. And we'll bring the paper towels and the dishes or whatever. And um, it's just a beautiful gathering for us to see one another and share each other's light. So share it, share it with all of our community members. Do stop by. It's, it'll just be wonderful to see each other. It's perfectly aligned. Um, yeah, just come. It sounds like a great time. And thanks again to Marty, who, who, who was able to, he came up with the place and was able to ensure that we could have it. So I appreciate his work and contribution to this. Um, just an FYI, the BIPOP meeting for today has been canceled. Uh, she gave me a uh, an email to let me know. Um, so they'll reassume their meeting next month in August. Um, one other thing, CCL's website. Did you get a chance to go look? Is it not brilliant? Do you see all the hard work that that Marlene, Reverend Marlene put into it, our, our office administrator goddess, and <laughs> um, the board put into it, and even uh, Reverend Paul and myself had in, input and so on and so forth. And it's just a beautiful work. It's uh, um, so many things in there. It's uh, You can make reference, share it with people. You want them to know more about the Center for Conscious Living, and you say a few things, direct them to our website. It's brilliant. And um, it's just a masterpiece and that it truly is. Um, Chanting with Julie continues to be in the uh, morning at 8 to 820 and there's a link. Our weekly mailing has a link to the website, has a link to Julie, gives you all the information. So <laughs> we're doing great on time. <laughs> Reverend Michael, 
Uh, yes. The men's, men's group is next Monday, the 19th. Thank you. Men's group next Monday, the 19th. <laughs> Come join us, guys. Come join us. I'm just checking my notes because it's important that I make sure everything has fair mention in it. So I know the women's group already met. Oh, and Ken Davis on the on the second and fourth Monday will do a, does the Course in Miracle meetings. And Red Tent women are off for the summer. I remember that. They announced that last week. They're taking the summer off. Wise women. <laughs> <laughs> Wise and smart women. So um, I believe we have a song and then we have um, our first practitioner, Reverend Sue, doing our closing prayer. Thank you. Thank you. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Norman, one announcement. We are having new member meeting right after this service. So anybody like to join in as well as it's Reverend Paul and myself will be doing it and welcoming our new members. So Reverend Sue. <laughs> thank you. And Michael, Reverend Michael, I want to just thank you so much. That was an extraordinary journey into our souls. I, I'm so I'm so bathed in love and light and gratitude for your beautiful, beautiful message. Thank you. Well, thank Ernest you. Holmes, open at the top. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, your light shines brightly, my friend. <laughs> so as we say this now, you, something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something, something wonderful is happening to me right, right now. now. I am a bright light radiating love. I am, I am a bright light, light radiating love. love. This wonderful thing is called life. This, this wonderful, wonderful thing is called life. life. That life is in my body. That life, life is, is in my body. body. That life is in my soul. That, that life is in my soul. That life is in my feelings. That life is in my feelings. That life is in all of my activities. That life is in all my activities. And I receive it. And I receive it. I share it. I share it. I am it. I am it. And I accept it. And I accept it. 
way that is. Just the way, the way it is. is. Thank you, life. Thank, Thank you, life. life. And accepting all these incredible, fabulous, brilliant things, we all say yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yes, you, thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, Michael. Unmute and say hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lots of blessings, Good morning, everybody. everybody. Hello, we have this lovely service. Hi. Oh, good. 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 I see everybody here. Okay. It is so yeah. nice to see everyone. Hi. Bless you. Hi. August 22nd. Lots of love. Yay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, Joe. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. See you again. Bye. 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 Bye.